Syracuse Orange fans, can you feel the heat? What is going on, Cuse Nation, and welcome to yet another edition of Orange Heat. My name is Giovanni Heater, as always, and thank you for joining me. We're here in Maryland. It's a big-time Syracuse football game day weekend. The stage is set. If you get through weeks one and two, you have a big opportunity to take on the defending national champions at home inside the Carrier Dome. But first, you have to get past a really tough opponent in Maryland. We took down Liberty last week, now a big time game against the Terps, and really a game that could describe what the rest of the season is going to look like. Arguably the biggest game on the schedule besides that Clemson matchup next weekend, and let's dive right into it. I first off think that this is going to be a really tough game for the Orange. I think that Maryland is a very good football team. I think that under new head coach Mike Loxley, who, by the way, is a former offensive coordinator at Alabama. So, you know, guys that leave Nick Saban's system traditionally have a lot of success in their careers. They build very strong cultures wherever they go. And you can see this being instilled in this Maryland football team already. Obviously, a little bit of a um, tough situation there last season. Their heads might not have necessarily been in the right place. They were playing for their lost teammate. Uh, head coach was fired there in Durkin. Um, so a lot of drama last year in College Park for this Maryland football team. Now a new coach, now a new system, now a brand new team to start the 2019 season. Talk about starting the 2019 season. They started off with a bang, taking down Howard 79 to nothing. Now I don't care who you are. If you score 79 points, that's impressive. That's something that really strikes a little bit of concern in any fan's eyes if you have to play this team in the upcoming weeks, and that we do. Um, a big-time game out of this entire Maryland team. Obviously pitching a shutout on the defensive side of the football. They had eight sacks in this ball game and one takeaway. Uh, we had eight sacks last week against Liberty. Something to look at, possibly defensive line um, battle here. I will say, I do think Liberty is a much better team than Howard. I looked at both of these teams, what kind of personnel they have. I, Liberty under Hugh Freeze and just uh, some good recruiting, especially in-state in the state of Virginia for them. They have that NFL caliber wide receiver. They have a good running back, a good quarterback. I think the thing with Liberty is their defense was even better than we had anticipated so I really think Liberty is a team that you could see them do some damage later on this season. They don't have the toughest schedule, but the teams that they do play, I think they're going to give a hard time. And you could see that team get themselves to a bowl game this year. So really that 24 to nothing win that Syracuse would pull away uh, doesn't look bad. It actually looks quite good. Um, obviously, Maryland scoring 79 looks pretty good as well. This is a team that is kind of interesting. You could call them transfer you, uh, so to speak. A lot of different transfers coming into this program. As I said, Mike Loxley getting his culture and his recruiting instilled, which is huge for that team. And one of the biggest transfers there is the quarterback position. Josh Jackson, a former star at Virginia Tech, he played very well in, for Justin Fuente in the Hokies. They had some successful seasons playing in an ACC championship against Clemson a few years back. Josh Jackson, a very talented quarterback. He's on this Maryland Terps team, and he went for 245 yards and four touchdowns, 15 for 24 last week. And, oh, yeah, they pulled him out just a little bit after halftime, and his backup came in and did the rest of the damage. So Josh Jackson, a very talented quarterback. He can run. He can throw the ball. And I'm a little bit concerned uh, to see, not concerned, that's the wrong word. I'm a little bit excited to see how our defense is going to handle that. Certainly higher level of competition than uh, Calvert was for the Flames last weekend. Another transfer big for this team, he hails from Virginia Tech as well. 
Sean Saran, he's a wide receiver. So a, a situation where they kind of talk both of those guys to go over to Maryland, jump the ship a little bit together. You have that quarterback wide receiver connection. They've played together for years at Virginia Tech, so they already have that chemistry. They're bringing it to a very good Terps football team. Something to look at as well there. Another one is Tyler Mabry. He's a tight end transfer from the University of Buffalo. I had some good numbers for Buffalo last season as well. Keandre Jones, linebacker, transfer from Ohio State. That's definitely big time. They uh, granted him full participation for this season. He doesn't have to sit out anything. Uh, that's big time if you're a Terps fan. He's certainly a talented linebacker. Just couldn't really break through at Ohio State, so he comes over to a, another Big Ten school in Maryland. And then Shaq Smith, a linebacker out of Clemson. So you see them building big time at the leadership positions, both at quarterback and then at linebacker. Um, linebacker leading the defense, quarterback leading the offense. Certainly big when you're instilling your culture in your program. You want to get your leadership first and foremost. And it looks like um, right now Mike Loxley is certainly doing the job there. Uh, Maryland versus Howard, looking at some of those statistics because we don't have a lot to go off of, which is kind of the crazy thing about this game that scares Dino Babers, as he said. Much like Liberty, there's basically nothing to watch on this team. Yes, they played Howard. Yes, they put up 79 points. That's one ball game. And the thing about that game is they probably played a very vanilla offense. They're not going to show off their tricks and deep into their packages just yet because they're saving that for another big game such as Syracuse week two on their schedule. And they don't want Syracuse to have that kind of preparation and capability. So they played a very simple offense. It's not the same as what you're going to see against Syracuse. And that scares Syracuse a little bit. It makes it tougher to prepare, much like Liberty. Very little film. Dino Babers was concerned. I know a lot of fans are concerned about that as well. And I think that's a big contribution as to why the offense struggled last week. Because, again, they had no film to watch on the Liberty defense whatsoever. And they had to come out with theirs. And then they had to make in-game adjustments, which especially the first game of the week, or excuse me, the first game of the season, is very difficult to do. Another situation that we're facing this week with a little bit of preparation. Maryland versus Howard. Five touchdowns and 379 rushing yards. So that's just the running side of the football. Some really big numbers. I saw two running backs set out of this team. They went as deep as three. They went even deeper than that at points. But could we see them go as deep as three against Syracuse? Much like how the Orange have the one-two punch with Mo Neal and Abdul Adams. And then you have Jarvian as your goal line back. I think you're going to see that out of this Maryland team as well. They're talented. They're deep. You have Jake Funk. Uh, he had 12 carries and 79 yards and a touchdown against Howard. And then you also have Tayon Fleet Davis, 79 yards on 16 carries in the first contest of the season against Howard. Looking at the other side of the offense, the passing game, 306 passing yards and five touchdowns. And the thing about that that is interesting to me is it's pretty spot on even. You're not I, apparently you're not going to have a team that's very pass heavy or very rush heavy. Both uh, the pass game and the rush game had about the same amount of yardage, 317 for the rush, 306 for the pass, and each of them scored five touchdowns. That's a lot of touchdowns, as you know, 79 points. But really uh, spreading the wealth there on offense big time. Um, something to look at going into this game. Not a super pass heavy, not a super rush heavy team. Um, since there's not a lot to look about at this Maryland team as far as the 2019 season is concerned, obviously a, a, a whole different system last season. But let's take a peek at what kind of success or what kind of downfalls they experienced last season. First off, they took down a very good Texas Longhorns team in week one of the season. The thing about that game, week one, Texas still, you know, finding out who they are. As we know, week one is full of messy football. Nonetheless, the Terps did beat the Longhorns um, in that game. That was probably the biggest win of their season, a big time win for them. And then they did go on late in the season to play Ohio State, losing that game in overtime. Really close game for the Terps. They went for a two-point conversion, didn't get it. That would have won them the game against a great, you know, playoff contending Ohio State team who, who was just on the outside of the college football playoffs last season. 
almost took down Ohio State and ruined their season. But then you look at some of the bad losses. They lost to a Temple team last year who was not anything crazy special. Um, they did beat Minnesota, who uh, I think under Coach Fleck is a good football team. They're on the rise. I think they're going to have a good season this year. They didn't have a bad one last year. They did beat Minnesota. And then they were close, a close loss to Indiana, who another team, not fantastic, but a, a, a decent team in the Big Ten, kind of comparable to a team like Pitt, uh, a team like Virginia Tech going into this season, uh, a Boston College type team out there in the Big Ten. Uh, they were close with them, losing that game by just a field goal. Um, this, right as I said, the stage is set. Syracuse hasn't had a non-conference Power 5 victory in a very long time. A very, very long time. You know, we've had the big wins in the ACC. Uh, the schedule has been at ease lately uh, the last two seasons. But, you know, we played LSU on the road a couple years ago. And, and before that, we played them in the Dome. Some big Power 5 games, but Syracuse wasn't able to close them out. A win here would go a long way as far as national landscape goes certainly would set the stage for college game day going into next week against Clemson. And I think this game is crucial to just keep the hype going. Keep the fan base excited. Keep everybody engaged on this team. You know, there's going to be a lot of Syracuse fans, as I've seen online, down here in Maryland. Obviously, I'm down here. Um, I hope that they, we can turn this into a little bit of a home game early. Uh, the Syracuse fans are going to be loud. They're going to be proud. They're going to be orange. So big there. Um, this game is just crucial to set up the rest of the season. If you lose here, it kind of puts question in the minds, especially if the offense struggles um, as far as the rest of the season goes. Not even looking at just the Clemson game. Going forward, there's some big games on this schedule. You still have to play Pitt inside the Carrier Dome. You got to travel on the road. You got to play NC State on a Thursday night. You have to play in Tallahassee down south playing Florida State on the road. So still some big games on this schedule. It, we need to keep momentum rolling. We're still carrying momentum from last season and the big bowl victory. It's crucial to keep this rolling throughout the rest of the season. Um, Maryland can score the football. Their defensive side looks pretty good as well. Again, Howard not a huge um, contender by any means, though, an FCS opponent. Uh, but I have Syracuse going out and stealing a win in this game. My final prediction for this ball game is Syracuse taking it 24 to 21. I think the game is going to be very close. I think you could see Andre Schmidt kick a walk kick a walk off field goal. I think it's going to be a kind of a game where who has the ball last. Uh, I don't think it's going to be super high scoring against Syracuse a really good defense, one of the best in the country. You got to say at least top 10. And then, um, you know, Maryland, also a solid defensive team. And, and that's going to mix with the fact that Syracuse didn't perform extremely well at all offensively last week. Now, with that being said, I do think the Orange are going to play much better offensively. Tommy coming out with that chip on his shoulder. I think you're going to see him throw at least a couple touchdown passes in this ballgame to kind of give the fans a little bit of, of, of hope. Going, uh, going forward here, um, you need him to play well tomorrow. Simple as that. You also need to get the run game going. You can see Mo Neal and Abdul Adams and as well as Jarvion Howard gash this Maryland defense a little bit as well. I said they have talented linebackers. Um, so we'll see. That's a key matchup. Their linebackers versus our running backs. And if Tommy can get things going in the pass game, get guys like Tristan Jackson some opportunities to go out and make plays. Give Taj Harris some opportunities. Give Nikeem Johnson some opportunities. I think you can see the Syracuse offense be successful. I think at least they're going to score 24 points. You could see them score more. Who knows? This could be a breakout game. The only thing that scares me is there's not a lot of defensive tape for this offense to watch, which is the problem they had last year. So it's going to come down to the coaching, the in-game adjustments. But as Dino said, it's at that point, it, this isn't really a coach's game. This is a player's game because – you kind of take the whole aspect of the preparation and the chess match out of it, to be quite honest. It's not really the play calling at that point. It's the players on the field performing, making the in-game adjustments for themselves, learning from them or their mistakes as the game goes on. 
that's going to be crucial in this ball game. I know this was a short one, guys. I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, as I said, I have the Orange winning this one 24-21. to Stay tuned for some more Orange Heat as the weekend progresses. Who knows what we're going to have, what, what, kind of, what kind of weekend we're going to bring ourselves to, but you might see a few videos from the game. I plan on recording some stuff from the tailgate. You never know. It depends on what the family schedule and everything is like as well. But I hope everybody tunes in to ESPN at noon to watch the game if you're not already down here in Maryland as the Orange take on the Terps in a big-time matchup that sets up the rest of the season. Thanks, you, thanks so much for watching, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. As always, we're trying to get those numbers up big time. Leave in the comments what your score prediction is. I'm curious to see what the rest of Orange Nation is thinking right now. So let's see what you guys have to say. Leave some comments as to what the score is going to be in this ball game. And as always, let's go Orange, baby. Woo! Thank you for listening to Orange Heat. Done by pursuing sports broadcaster and high school student Giovanni Heater. You can find him on Twitter and Instagram at Geo Heater. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more Syracuse athletics and orange heat action. Let's go orange!